Recently, I became one of the millions of viewers to watch Netflix's new series, Bridgerton. It had some acting, it had some dialogue, but most importantly, it had some dresses and I was obsessed. An 18th century period drama like no other, and at one point, it was literally a period drama. I found myself lying awake at night asking the same question, who is Lady Whistledown? Upon finishing the series, my sleep-deprived brain led me to one conclusion. I wanted to be a debutante. Okay, listen, I'm not actually obsessed with 18th century period dramas, okay? If I'm going to be completely honest, I am more of a 2005 Pride and Prejudice type of gal than a Bridgerton one, but I want to talk about the real star of Bridgerton, Ellen Morozhnik, the costume designer. She's been critiqued by many, saying that the costumes of Bridgerton were not historically accurate, but Morozhnik herself states in an interview, the overall concept for the Bridgerton world allowed for an unconventional approach to just about everything. Bridgerton was a very romanticised version of the 18th century and the costumes reflected that. I for one was so inspired by the costume design that I'm now sat here making this video. So I hope you enjoy watching my little adventure into making my own Bridgerton inspired dress. Okay, this might seem like historical costuming blasphemy, but hear me out, I plan to make it into a two-piece. Not your modern day two pieces with your belly fully exposed, no. I want to make the top and skirt separate so that in my normal everyday 21st century life, I have a cute little top I can wear and then when I'm in an 18th century mood, I can put on the skirt and have a Regency dress. I don't know if that's like cheating by making it a two-piece, but something tells me I won't wear a Regency dress very often. Alas, all my local shops are closed because of the pandemic, which means I can't attain any special fabric for this project. So I'll simply make do with whatever I find in my own personal fabric stash. Lucky for me, I am a fabric hoarder, but I mean at least it's neatly organised. I keep my addiction under control. <laughs> okay, let's look for anything blue. Bridgerton blue. blue. Do I look like a debutante? Yes, we are using some old crusty curtains for this, but honestly, I think it's perfect. <laughs> they definitely had polyester in the 18th century, right? I wonder if I can incorporate these big grommets into it, like uh, Daphne from the Space Age. <laughs> Madame Delacroix has the most modern garments. Tell me, has Lady Whistledown written anything about me? Okay, so I've looked up the basic construction of a classic Regency dress and these seem to be the shapes or pattern pieces that we want to be going for. So this may not be a good idea and it certainly isn't very professional. Nothing about this video is very professional. I think I'm just gonna freehand these shapes, cut them out and hope for the best. First fitting. Okay, so first fitting conclusion, it doesn't fit. <laughs> okay, on inspection, I have established a number of things. Neckline, lower. These seams, 
deeper. Side seam, <sighs> side seam, wider. Back shoulder seam, longer. Okay, I'm gonna make these adjustments, sew them up, and hopefully it will fit perfectly. Fitting number two. It fits like a lot better than the first time. It's kind of hard to show you the back, but. <laughs> ah, pins. I did point the pins down this time and they are still stabbing me. Okay, next I want to sew up the side seams and then attach the sleeves. So here's me happily sewing up my side seams before realizing that, yeah, I should have done my sleeves first. So I called upon the services of my seam ripper and together we unpicked these stitches. And now for the sleeves. Okay, to turn these blobs of fabric into puffy sleeves, I'm going to throw on a gathering stitch along this curved edge. And to do that, I'm turning my stitch length on my machine to the highest that it can go and then simply sewing all along the curved edge whilst the machine is on this setting. I also make sure not to back tack and to leave a long tail of thread after sewing. To form the gathers, I pull on the thread and shimmy the fabric into position until we reach our desired puffiness. Here you can see a really good before and after. Okay, so here is the armhole. A good thing to do with puffy sleeves is actually mark out where you want the puff to be because you don't really want puffy armpits. You want to focus the volume in your shoulder, right? Then it's simply a case of pinning your sleeve right sides together along the armhole. And once you're finished with the pinning, it's time to take your sleeve baby and run it through the machine. <laughs> Hello, this is fitting number three and the sleeves are in. It's coming together. I'm really happy with how the sleeves turned out. Like they have volume, but they're not too puffy. As you can see, my side seams are still hanging loose. And now I, oh, <laughs> that is exactly why I'm wearing this t-shirt underneath. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is flip this inside out so that the right sides are facing. And then I will sew up the sleeve and the bodice side seam in one go. So here are both side seams of bodice and sleeve pinned and ready to go. I use a straight stitch to sew it up and when I get to the corner, I simply lift the presser foot, pivot the bodice round and then continue sewing with a straight line all the way down the seam. This is how the seam looks on the inside and this is how it looks on the outside. It's kind of nice, right? It's like a real top or something. <laughs> Moving on to the back of the bodice, I cut out two strips of fabric like this. Then I interfaced both of these pieces to make them more structured and heavier in weight. And taking these strips, over to the machine, I'm sewing them down each edge of the back opening. Over at the ironing board, I press the strips inwards like this and then sew them down in place. So the next stage, of course, is to finish off this ugly raw neckline and raw hem. So I'm bringing out the bias binding. So the plan of action is to sew it to the right side of the fabric, flip it over, top stitch it down, leaving us with a lovely clean edge. Now obviously you can't exactly manoeuvre bias binding around a corner, so I simply cut the binding and then started with a new piece along the new edge and it worked out fine. Here is how it looks all pinned and now it's time to take it to the machine. I'm sewing with the usual straight stitch and of course pivoting at the corners. To get a nice clean sharp edge at the corner, you do have to make a small cut to allow enough flexibility for the binding to fold over. Once again, we're bringing out our old friend, the iron, pressing the binding into the inside of the bodice. Then we're taking it back to the machine, top stitching the whole thing down. And what we should be left with are some gorgeous, lovely, beautiful, crisp edges. Okay, I think it's about time that we finish off these puffy sleeves. So first of all, I pop on the top and find out how long my arm wants this sleeve to be and I mark it in place. I cut off the excess fabric and flip the whole top inside out. Okay, from here, I take the sleeve edge and I fold it up once. I fold it up twice, making sure that the hem is wide enough to fit an elastic through. Sewing this down in place, 
I make sure to leave a gap left unsewn, which acts as an entryway for my elastic. Okay, so next, ho hold on a minute. This fake debutante wants to interrupt my voiceover. Okay, to finish the sleeves, I have some elastic here, which I measured around my, my big muscly arm. <laughs> Okay, I'm taking a safety pin, popping it on the end of this elastic here so that we have something to navigate the elastic through. Got my bodice, find the hole in here and essentially using the safety pin to shimmy it through. Okay, I'm now reaching the other side. Now that we have the two ends, what we want to do is sew these together so that we have a continuous loop. And once your elastic is joined together, you simply even it out in the sleeve and then close your opening and then that is your sleeve. Okay, I'm back and I'm here to tell you that I'm sewing these sexy silver hooks onto the back opening of the bodice. Last but not least, it's time to make the skirt. Laying the fabric in half, I cut out the two skirt pieces that I need. Honestly, I was kind of over it at this point. I just wanted the skirt to be nice and easy, simple. Hopefully it won't take too long because I'm so tired of working on this project. I had in fact been working on this for two months. I'm just really slow at doing everything. So let's speed through this skirt. I'm sewing the side seams. Then I'm sewing an elasticated waistband, just like I did for the end of the sleeves. Then I tried it on and realized I'd sewn a skirt fit for a six foot four Regency woman and I'm only five foot five. So I chopped off the excess and finally sewed the hem. After that, there was only one final thing that I wanted to do to complete the look. It's time to give this lockdown hair a lockdown haircut. <laughs> This is what used to be my fringe, but this is what lockdown does to a fringe. <laughs> To be honest, this would still be better than the fringe that Daphne and Eloise had. <laughs> I think these are good so far. I don't want to go too short. I just had to show you. It looks a lot better now that I've styled it with straighteners because before it was just a bit, a bit limp. <laughs> bottom of my heart, thank you kindly for watching and if you enjoyed this video, perhaps we will meet again. I'm simply burning to make more content. <laughs> Bye.